ah, that sip of coffee in the morning. I will be lying if it was morning, that was like 6 p.m. Um, anyways, the Tyrena division, a new one for the Soviet Union or for the communist side. We're going to be going through it, like always. First, we'll go through all of the different types of units, and then we'll go over my own selection. So, um, yeah, recon. Kind of like a war game, I'm just going to go through this real quick, <laughs> like old times. So we have a recon vehicle, a motorbike here with a 7.62 machine gun. Pretty good, oh, really cheap, 10 points. Like that is that is a no-brainer sometimes if you want to be like on the front line really quick with all of your units, including your recon. We got a dozer infantry recon here. You can choose a lot of different types of vehicles, so including like a Resfetka that has a gun on it, so that way you don't lose the vehicle when you unload. Two-man team, really good at going actually past the enemy lines. I've done this a few times in the latest few videos, and um, yeah, that really pays off. We have the Batmobile, the BA-10M, with the 45mm AP only, so no HE on it. But you can engage infantry with the machine gun. But um, really funny if you want to like quickly move up to the enemy road, <clears throat> that they would be, uh, be on close to the front line, and like, like you can start engaging some things, make them unload. Um, basically force them to halt their advance. We have the Konaya Resvetka, 11-man recon team here with PPSHs and Mosin Nagans. You get not a lot of them at A, but B you get 4, C you get 8 for going for the lowest veteran C. And once again, there's a wide variety of uh, vehicles you can choose out of, but interesting recon actually. It's a rifle squad, but um, yeah, I mean, 11 men for recon. I never really found them that useful to have 11 dudes though. Like, if you get past the enemy line, okay, but, I mean, you're you're a big squad, you're gonna get spotted pretty easily. Then we got the uh, the Katy Perry's, the sniper teams with the Mosin Nagant at a thousand meters range, and one PPSH, just good in general. And there's a lot of vehicles you can choose out of as well. And then the last thing that we have in the recon tab is the 76 variant of the T-34, this is the Resvetka, the recon version. 76.2 mil cannon, okay stats. Um, two machine guns. Fun for flanks, but in this case I would use them together with your tanks if you do choose to use um, this Resvetka. In the infantry tab, quite a lot of infantry. Pretty good infantry as well. So we have the NKVD here, the assault squad. Kind of like the uh, Feld Gendarmerie that the Russian Germans have with four PPSHs. Decent. I never really used them too much. Um, just mainly because, well, it's four men and they only have, like, yeah, they do have PPSHs, but if you're up against ten dudes with MP40s, you're gonna lose. Um, probably good to support your infantry, since you do get 12 of them, and they're super cheap. So that is that is one good, um, one good detail about that. We have the Sapris with the PPSH and the Panzerfaust 60 bazooka. Pretty good units, once again, assault engineers in this case. Um, so maybe if you couple them up with the NKVDs, then yeah, you will actually have a pretty good, uh, pretty good coupled unit there. But yeah, pretty decent. Like they have TNT, so they can engage infantry, and they have the bazooka, so they can also engage enemy armor. Speaking of engaging enemy infantry, we also have the Tanko Desant Nikis here with the eight PPSHs. Um, I've seen a lot of people use these more and more, probably mainly because they're really cheap, 15 points for 8 PPSHs. That is that is pretty pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. I would recommend these if um, if you've used them in the past with success. Strelikis, definitely the backbone, I would say, of any Russian infantry battle group. These guys are cheap. They have a good loadout. They pretty much have something for everything. Like they have short range en engagement weapons. Well, it says one PPSH, but it's something. You have a Mosinagans, you have the machine gun, and you have the RPG-43 anti-tank grenade. And the best thing about, the, about this is that they're 20 points. So in phase C, what I usually do is if I'm playing Breakthrough or something like that, like a 1v1 perhaps, you know, you can just spawn in 27 infantry units and just charge them up to the front line. Like that, that is one way to do it. We have a leader on a motorbike. Who definitely needs a friend. We have the Afto Machiki Kambrati, leader infantry with the smoke and three PPSHs loadout. Afto Machiki, definitely one of my favorite Russian infantry. Perfect at close range and they 
against infantry that is and they also do have the anti-tank grenades so they can engage tanks pretty successfully i've used these guys a lot um, including to kill tanks and uh yeah they're, they're pretty good at it and you can get four cards of them sapris pphs svts machine guns and tnt so mainly good for mid to long range engagements i would say mid range engagements and they also have anti-infantry grenades here the tnt um, yeah, it's a 10-man squad and you get, you get them for 25 points and the, yeah, there's a wide variety of weapons or vehicles you can choose out of and this goes for pretty much all of these units and we will go over that when we look at my deck. But yeah, pretty good infantry unit to have and you get quite a lot of these as well. Um, it's kind of crazy how much infantry you get with the Russians. Okay, so <clears throat> that was the Sapri. We also have the Sturm Movikis. No, these are not the flamethrower infantry, these are the assault engineer variant of it. So, 7 PPSHs, 1 machine gun, and the TNT. Pretty decent, I gotta say. Like, compared to the Aftermachiki, they have, yes, less PPSHs, but they have more... Well, they have a machine gun, that's one thing. And instead of being anti-tank, they are anti-infantry based. So they're kind of like what the Sapri is but definitely with more close quarters, um, you know, effectiveness. So that is something that is, might be the most interesting thing about this deck, is its power to have a lot of firepower at close range, instead of the other Russian decks where it's more balanced. Strelke DP variant, so we have 8 SVTs, 2 machine guns, and a PTRD. Just really good at mid and long range. There is absolutely nothing that kind of you know, goes par on par with this, uh, with this infantry unit on mid and long range engagements. Like, with 8 rifles and 2 machine guns, they will be, definitely will be able to wreck anything out in the open if these guys are in cover, and the PTRDs also give a lot of criticals to even the heaviest tanks. The Strelke Komroti leader, with PPSH, 2 SVTs and a smoke. Tanko Komroti, basically 3 PPSHs and an anti-tank grenade. And yeah, the kind of infantry that they are made out of also gives you a hint of what type of weapons they have. And then last but not least, we have the Sapri with the Panzerfaust. We have a lot of different types of infantry leaders here. We also have this guy here, the Sturmoviki Komroti. So this is a six-man leader team. You don't get a lot of it, but it is six dudes in a squad with a pretty decent loadout. And... You know, the, the leader in the forest, I would say. The assault engineers with the flamethrowers and six PPS stages. It, it doesn't, it, it's not even funny. In the tank tab, we have the... What was this called again? Stewards, there we go. The M5L, I believe this is the steward. I think it is. Um, yeah, don't bring it out in phase B, you're gonna lose it. Bring it out in phase A to, you know, give that initial surprise attack against the enemy. Because that armor is not going to hold. That's one thing. Yes, maybe at super close range you will be able to damage the heaviest tanks. <clears throat> but, you know, the enemy is going to be dug in to a certain extent in phase B. So uh, it would, you know, outweigh the... It would outweigh the benefits, I would say. We have a T-34-76 leader tank. Decent tank in general. 76 mil gun, decent armor as well, and especially for phase A, if we can get these, they'll definitely do some damage. Um, you get 4 in phase B, and 6 in phase C. We also have the regular variant here, the OBR-43, 76 mil, and the main difference here is that... Is there any difference? I don't think there's any difference, actually. Yeah. There's basically a non-tank, or the non-commander variant, or leader variant. You get loads of these as well. So what I've done, I think, is get a few in Phase A, load them in Phase B, and get some other tanks in Phase C. Well, we'll go over that in a minute. We also have the OBR-42 variant here. Um, basically, a better gun, or armor, I should say. So it has 90 front armor compared to 75, and 5 more side armor. So it's a little bit better at one-on-one -on -one tank engagements, but I would always recommend coupling as many Russian tanks as possible when engaging. Pretty decent. 
Support tab, we have a two-man squad here with a flamethrower and one PPSH. You get loads and loads of these. Like, what is that even about at this point? <laughs> what is this? We have the 50mm mortar, really close range but high rate of fire. If you want to quickly help out your infantry um, by, you know, by yourself being really close to the front line. We have the Maxim machine gun, 1000 meters range. You know, it's better than spitting on the enemy, I guess. We have a 76.2 mil infantry gun. Definitely a really good fire support um, if you're trying to defend a range, like a like a hill or or you know on the side like a, the the, um, the edge of a forest, the edge of a tree line. These are perfect for that. And also when you're assaulting a town, these guys could some could give some really good fire support um, when you're running towards it. We also have the SG42. So this is a, definitely a better weapon than the Maxim machine gun. Uh, mainly because of its increased rate of fire and range. Um, yeah, which is actually basically the only two differences. So I would I would definitely go for the SG-42. And there's also the strength is a little bit higher. The, the amount of bullets you have with the SG-42 is less. So at some point you might run out of bullets. We have the T4. Pretty fun looking assault gun here. So I believe this is the Panzer... Isn't this like the one of the Panzer IV variants? Panzer IV F? I'm not quite sure. Let me know. But uh, yeah, 75 mil gun on a 30% max range accuracy tank. And you get five of these in phase A. Um, you know, it might be it might be a lot of fun. And also has two machine guns. Who knows? Supplies: a commander infantry and a commander M2. And the anti-tank, quite a lot of the choices here that to, that you can make. We have a PTRS infantry anti-tank team with an anti-tank rifle, 500 meters range, pretty decent accuracy and um, yeah, penetration values. You'll get a lot of criticals with this one. <clears throat> we also have the anti-tank team with the Faust Patronus, 120 meters range, 90% accuracy, really good penetration and also for close quarters you can defend yourself pretty well. We have the M20 M42 45mm, a good stealth anti-tank gun, and if you've seen my latest video, you will see that some uh, stealthy anti-tank guns can do a lot of damage, even against the heaviest tanks. And I mean 100% or 100mm penetration. It, it's gonna do a lot of criticals, even if you don't manage to kill the enemy tank, even if you hit it from the front against like an IS-2, you'll do some criticals, that's for sure. 40% accuracy, max range, 12 rate of rounds per minute. That is really good. We also have the ZIS-2, the 57mm long barrel here. 145mm penetration on the APCR rounds, 50% accuracy, which drops to 120mm penetration, but it re like retains the accuracy um, when going down to the AP shell. I guess maybe because of the longer barrel, but uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure. In some weapons, in some AT guns, the accuracy decreases quite a bit when you go for AP, like this one here. We also have the ZIS-3 here. And in this case, the accuracy does decrease. So either this one is faulty or this one is faulty because with the muzzle brake, it should even be more accurate. I'm not quite sure, but yeah. 135 millimeter penetration on the APCR shells with 50% accuracy and 105 mil penetration on the AP rounds with 40% accuracy. So decent accuracy values. Once, you don't get a lot of them, and these kind of AT guns I would most likely get in phase B to like dig in and get some good defenses going. But I think the most valuable anti-tank weapon you have is the SU-85 tank destroyer with 180 mil penetration on the APCR and 145 on the AP rounds. Um, yeah, it's just a good tank destroyer in general, really. I've seen these in uh, War Thunder as well, they're kind of scary. Anti-tank, not too much. We have the Dushka. We have the Gaz AAA Maxim 4M with the four 30 cal machine guns. And we have the standard 37 millimeter auto cannon here. In the artillery tab, we have the artillery observer. Once again, really useful to use if you're trying to not sacrifice your leaders to get that aura for your artillery to the front line. So what these guys do is they give you a better accuracy within their sphere of influence and you also are able to aim at your target and fire faster at your target like as soon as possible basically but uh, if you're not using these 
the artillery will be a little bit less accurate and they will take more time to fire. That's just a simple explanation there. 82 millimeter mortar, 3000 meters range, decent rate of fire. And then we have the 120 millimeter mortar, which has three rate of fire less and it does more damage. I would probably go for the 120s every time unless yeah, for some reason you think the extra rate of fire is worth it with the 82 mils, but yeah, you'll be very close to the front line. 76.2 mil artillery observer for an off map. 76.2 artillery howitzers, 8 rounds per minute, 30% accuracy, not too bad. And then we have the 120s, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, these guys are beasts. 110 points though, but they do have a better accuracy, only around per 10 seconds, but if you have an artillery observer, that'll go up significantly. And it also has anti-tank <clears throat> capabilities with those heat shells, so it can also engage tanks. But yeah, much more damage, suppression, blast, and all that good stuff. In the air tab, let's see what we have here. So we have the IL-2KR air recon with the 223mm uh, wing autocannons and also 230 cals and 150 cal turrets. Pretty, just a good recon in general, really. I wouldn't really use it to engage enemy planes since uh, recon is valuable in this game, that's for sure. We have a biplane here with uh, 200 kilograms of bombs. Super slow. I haven't even I haven't even put these in my battle group. Like it's not World War One anymore, but it is it is a funny one to use. That's for sure. We also have the same dude with more bombs, six fifty kilogram bombs in this case. Um, okay, I was gonna say dude, drop him out of the cockpit, but it's like way over there, so that's pretty good. Now we also have this biplane with cluster bombs. What what is that about? Honestly, if you manage to kill enemy tanks with this biplane cluster bomber, I will be very impressed. Because that would mean they don't have any planes, they don't have any AA, and they've moved really close to your front line. What is this about? I have no idea. I've not yeah, I've not even put these in there because of that. Um Yeah, anyway, so in the air tab we also have the PE3 BIS. Heavy fighter with 120 mil on the front, on the nose, two 50 cals on the nose as well, and we have a 50 cal turret um, in the bottom there at its at its pooper. We have the Yak-9 fighter here with the 20 mil autocannon and a 50 mil machine gun on the nose. Pretty fast, fast fighter, 580 kilometers per hour. Very good agility. Definitely, um, definitely a good one to put in there. And we also have the Yak-9T, um, which is slightly well, it's only like 5 km per hour less quick because of it 37mm autocannon on the nose. That thing is going to shred. That is basically the equivalent of the P-39 um, Air Cobra. So, yeah, you can also take down some ground targets with this. But this thing, coupled up with uh, perhaps the Yak-9 or the, or the BIS, is definitely going to wreck face. We also have the BIS with some HE rockets, six 132mm HE rockets, we have a 20mm autocannon on the nose, two 50 cals on the nose as well, and the 50 cal turret. And we also have the tank buster variant of the rockets, the 132mm HE sap rockets six times, a 20mm on the nose, two 50 cals, and a 50 cal turret. So not too bad of a deck, definitely, definitely a balanced um, deck. But yeah, I should also probably do one about the Korok 559, but uh, today we're gonna jump over to the Torina and see if we actually make some adjustments to this since we've freshly discussed the deck itself. So in the recon tab, I've put in two uh, sniper teams. I've ignored all of the other ones because I've noticed that my gameplay with sniper is mostly to flank around the enemy lines and then use that line of sight to then use my artillery and redirect it right on top of them. I do use recon for the front line, but usually I do that with my airplanes instead of my infantry. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so in phase A, I have four sniper teams. These are mainly going to be used close, either close to the front line or to flank around the enemy's front line to spot like their artillery or other units. And we also have them in phase B. Um, yeah, you could always go for some other recon. Honestly, this is probably already too much recon. I usually 
don't use more than a card of recon unless they have some like good loadouts like um, these guys here in the infantry tab quite a lot of infantry that's for sure so in phase a i have the sapris for their anti-infantry capabilities and also for their excellent overall loadout like really they can do pretty good damage at close range uh, mainly at mid range and if they do get in close range proximity of infantry we have the tnts and the two ppshs um, we also have these Streliki DPs. These are more mid-range and anti-tank focused. Basically everything is mid-range focused here with the longer um, engagement ranges for all of the weapons. And two machine guns and a PTRD. Like anything that runs towards you out in the open is going to get wrecked. And any tanks that you can surprise or enemy half tracks or any light armored vehicles are just going to get wrecked as well. And um, yeah. So we've put these Sapris on the mid veterancy in the student backers. We have the Streliki DPs in the student backers as well to quickly get to the front line to block like any rate of like any reinforcement line with the PTRDs. And since it's phase A, I've tried to put most of my infantry in fast trucks. We also have the Aftomachikis. I've put these in the M2A1 for the uh, 50 cal here, and you also retain that vehicle. And these M2A1s are really quick, 70 kilometers per hour. Um, you know, with a 50 cal, so what's not to like? Yeah, 10 PPSHs and anti-tank grenade. If you couple them with something like a Sapri, you have something against anti-tank. You have 12 PPSHs, effectively. You have rifles, machine guns, and yeah, it's it's pretty insane. These, this is, I think, a really balanced loadout. It is, yeah, you, I don't have a lot of it, a lot of infantry, but 18 squads... Uh, 22 if you count the leader is should be should be enough in phase B is where you should probably start spamming We also have the Strelke leader, but uh, yeah, that's it <laughs> in phase B. We have the after Machikis once again um, 12 squads on mid veterancy We have the Strelke DPs on mid veterancy, which I might drop down to the lowest vet to get the highest amount uh, possible that I can get because you know if if you need these in phase B, you probably need a lot of it. Um, it's my uh, kind of idea about these or behind these units. We also have the Sturmovikis that I'm calling in in phase B. Now, this is an interesting one because usually if you are using these flamethrower troops, you want to use them in forests and stuff like that. Um, yes, that is true. But usually I like to use them after I've actually engaged all of the enemy's flamethrowers because with either artillery or planes or tanks or something like that to then use my flamethrowers without them having any counter against it um, in terms of infantry that's how i like to use these instead it's not rock paper scissors this game is definitely more like chess and um, that's how it should be played in my opinion now the only thing that this deck misses is a phase c card so one way that i could fix that is by removing this phase b leader and getting a phase c card in the form of either Strelikis because of the anti-tank grenades or I could get the Strelikis in phase B um, instead which would make me lose the PTRDs and just uh, get the PTRDs in phase um, C but the best thing in this case I would I would believe is to just get some Strelikis in phase C on mid veterancy and that would give me that extra buffer infantry especially with the Russians this is really important in the tank tab, we have the M5L, the stewards. We have six of these on mid -vet. Not Don't even bother getting them in the in B phase. Speaking of B phase, we have the T3476 Comrotti leader, four of these. And also the T3476-43 tanks. 45 points, you get 12 on mid -vet. Pretty good. If you get a lot of these guys on the front line and firing at the enemy tank at the same time, you will definitely do some damage. Even if you just make them fall back. And then phase C, we kind of went for a derp loadout here. Um, 18 T-34 76s, 1942s. Phase B probably would be better, but honestly, you wouldn't even be able to buy it all. Unless you like don't spend points on anything else. So I've just gone for phase C to get a little bit extra. And yeah, even then you can get 12 of these, uh, which is probably more than enough in my opinion. In the support tab... Pretty similar loadout to all of my other decks, but in this case we have two commanders, believe it or not. I have been experimenting with this quite a bit, and I've really found that 
if you make sure that everything of your infantry is linked to a commander they will do insanely more damage this speaks for itself but i see a lot of people actually not use commanders enough or you know their commanders does not have enough range uh, with you know all of your units so i you, i'm now trying to get a second commander in here to make sure that everything is uh, within the sphere of influence so anyways yeah phase a we have the sg42 machine gun or 43 machine gun we have a supply truck in phase a we have the combat infantry commander in phase a the m2 combat in phase b and more supplies in phase c in the anti-tank we have the m42 45 millimeter anti-tank gun 45 millimeter apcr rounds on these so pretty good accuracy and um, good stealth on these as well we have the zis 257 in phase a as well two of them on the midvet and we have two midvetted su-85s to have like a mobile anti-tank sniping team in case the anti-tank guns here cannot match up in phase b the zis 257 once again midvet three of these we also have the zis 360 76.2 mil um, anti-tank gun as well and together that makes six and we also have the su-85 tank destroyer one thing that this deck misses is probably some phase c anti-tank but um, with all of these i think if you just micro them sufficiently you'll definitely not uh, not run out anytime soon the aa is a bit lacking in this battle group or this division but uh, you do get some fun choices so we have the triple a maxim it's good that everything is self-propelled instead of you know apart from the 37 but that's fine so we have four of these in phase a and since i do like the firepower of the 37s and because i don't have anything else that can match this i put these in phase b instead and you can get you can get six of these if you go for the lowest vet um but with i've noticed with especially with aa if you go for the mid vet you do a lot more damage and even if you have a commander connected to these then they will absolutely snipe everything and in that way three should be enough unless you're doing a 1v1 in that case i would probably go for the lowest bet but it really depends if i'm playing a 1v1 i'll probably quickly adjust that to six in the artillery tab quite a lot of artillery actually so we have two cards of these 120 mils so we get six of these in total we have six 76.2 millimeters on the mid vet and phase b and we also have the lowest vet phase b 122 millimeter m30 howitzers so definitely if you're using these lower lowest vet ones you want to probably put a leader right next to them um, but since we don't really have a lot of leaders anyways it will be more important to actually use your leaders closer to the front line to get that area of influence where these guys can accurately you know aim at and fire at um, in a better than vanilla stats if that makes sense let's rephrase that if you have a really low veterancy artillery make sure that there is a leader close to the front line with a radio that can then guide the artillery towards the target faster and with more accuracy there you go and i just like artillery so i put more in there the il2 kr air recon pretty pretty darn good definitely like using these well i just like using air recon in general we have the pe3 bis with the 20 mils the 50 cals on the 50 cal turret really fast uh, plane agility is medium and that's actually not too bad for a heavy plane but the resilience is really high so it can take quite a lot of uh quite a lot of punishment we have the yak 9t the auto cannon 37 mil auto cannon on the front absolutely insane and it also has a 50 cal on the nose and we get four of these on mid fat in phase b so together with um with the bis that makes a pretty good loadout i've not gone for the yak 9 because it is pretty good like it has it has that 20 mil but uh, sometimes you want something with high resilience in case the enemy has a lot of aa or yeah for any other reason but i've i've mainly gone for the bis because of its heavier heavier loadout in phase a um compared to having these yaks in phase a as well i just like to have something that can quickly engage the plane and get out there um whilst being able to take some punishment and this is definitely definitely fits that bill in phase b we have the pe3 bis with the six he rockets and in phase c we have two of these bisses with anti-tank rockets in phase b you only get one of them sadly 
So um, yeah, I had to go for phase C. And these these rockets actually do a lot of damage to enemy tanks, and they actually kill surprisingly. But yeah, that was it um, for that part. So with this battle group, I've I've been neglecting the deployment type for quite some time. Um, I wouldn't worry about this. I would really worry about how, or I would focus on how you have selected your battle group. So it looks like mine is mostly B phase, uh, with quite a lot of surplus troops in phase C. So definitely balance would do fine, but I would probably go for Maverick since you want to use a lot of your units in phase B and spawn them all out and in phase C like what what do I have yes I do have 12 55 point T-34s and I have supply trucks I have some cheap infantry and I have these P-3 bisses but apart from that 90% of my units are in phase B so how do you decide you have to look at both your deck and the points you get so if you go for Maverick you get 30 less points in A but you get 60 more points in B. And any points you d haven't used in phase B, I mean, you take them to phase C anyways, and there you get 30 less points than Vanguard. Balanced, honestly, does look like the best choice here, but Maverick, because of our heavily spammable um, phase B loadout here, especially with the infantry tab, so I think that would work the best. Yeah, the code for this battle group is down below. If you want to um, check it out, please do import it let me know how it went in your game and um yeah have a lot of fun i guess and i will see you guys back in the next one so take care